Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of Secrets in the Saddle All Things Cycling Podcast with your host, Sylvie Daou and Cycling Coach. So before we get started, I have some quick announcements. I have two, actually, and they are related to winter or cycling training skills. Now, August is about the time where a lot of us start thinking about, ooh, what am I going to do to, you know, improve what I'm already doing now? So you think about how am I doing on the road? What kind of skills would I love to improve and how am I going to get those skills? And that's where I have something so amazing for you. It doesn't matter where you're sitting because we're in like 35 different countries. Amazing. So this can impact all of you if it interests you or piques your interest. So the first thing is I have a cycling skills online four week workshop for women. And this is where we're going to, it's only for September and October. Each week we focus on a different skill. So first we really work on what is a smooth pedal stroke and how to get more efficient. I'm going to share with you the skills and tips and my secrets about that. And then we're going to move on to hills and then speed. And then we finish it up with nutrition. We get and we also talk about our weight training program, which is so important for strength training to become better. With this one, it's super fun because every week we do the workshop and then I give you homework and then we have a QA. and a So you basically have me as a coach for the whole month. And that is cyclingskillspro.com. Go, you can register now, secure your spot September or October. Then the next one is a much longer, more training, more uh, geared towards um, working towards goals and really drilling in the skills that A, we go through in the four-week program, pedal stroke, then we get into the drills, and it's periodized. I also help you with organizing yourself to be scheduled in your training so that you don't overdo it and you become very intentional. I just love this because a lot of people just get on the online programs and they just go for broke all the time you have to plan it. It's an 80-20 rule, 80% um, endurance, 20% intensity. And if you're not getting that, you're just going to basically overtrain yourself and overdo it. So the 16-week program is dedicated to that and so much more. So this starts in November to March. So it's truly through the winter weight training, online program, uh, maybe some racing, group riding, All of that is going to be part. You just join us and we'll take care of your winter training. Now go to 16weekroadcycling.ca and secure your spot. Registration is not open right now, but those who are on the VIP will get a chance to secure a spot at an early bird price. So don't wait. Get on the list. All right. Take care and have an amazing day. And don't forget to ride your bike. All right. Thank you so much for coming out for another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Deu. And we have an exceptionally amazing um, guest lined up for you today. Her name is uh, Shay Hado. And I met her in a master class program or a master program um, just recently this fall, uh, this fall, this spring. And I thought that she was an amazing uh, guest to bring on, not only, um, like I said, she's not into cycling, but what she is into is soccer, but she is transferred, transformed into an expert coach and speaker on confidence and mindset for young athletes. Now this can translate to all uh, sports. And so since we're a cycling podcast, I hope that there's some young females, or if you know of some young females, to pass this and share this episode with them, and maybe they can connect with what Shay is doing. So without ado, I'm, she has, um, so I'm just going to introduce her before we bring her out, but it's so amazing all the stuff she's been doing. Like, honestly, um, I just want to like duplicate everything you do for like the moms out there of kids maybe like the the parents um so she's the founder of alpha girl confidence host of alpha confidence podcast so she has a podcast as well she's an author author of a best-selling book she the confident and i feel bad 
that I didn't, I knew she had a book and I just, re, like when I was looking at her, I'm like, I should have a book in my hands because <laughs> I can then hand it to my 18 year old daughter who probably mm -hmm. could, <laughs> I put her onto this. Um, and she also has some pretty cool um, text messages that she's going to talk about as well. So she has a little bit like of a business. She's got a little bit, she's got a big business going out. And Shay, I just want to welcome you. And I'm so proud to have you as a guest on our podcast. Thank you, Sylvie. That was such an amazing intro. I'm so excited to be here. And like, you know, just like, yes, I work with, you know, youth female athletes, but as we know, confidence and mindset is so important for everyone. So excited to dive into it. Yeah, and I'm sure um, you might, as a parent mm -hmm. of a daughter that would probably have gone through one of your programs. And like I said, I have an 18 year old. And when I met you and I heard about everything you're doing, and then I listened to some of your podcasts, I'm like, sweetie, you need to start following this girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, because like, I just, because as a parent, and maybe we could just talk about that as parents mm -hmm. of athletes, we don't know what's going on in their heads. Yeah. And sometimes we're just like, oh my gosh, how can I help you? get through this because you know as yeah. you know young girls don't want to listen to their moms or maybe they they really do but like maybe some moms do a really good job of connecting with their daughters um but I have two more coming up so mm. <laughs> yeah. I know I can learn from Shay so why don't you talk about like how you went from your sport into what you're doing now yeah so growing up I was a really good athlete played soccer and basketball, but at age 12, I tore my ACL. So I very young age to kind of go through that process. Obviously, physically, it was really difficult, but more so mentally. And really, I when I stepped back on the field after those nine months of being injured, like my confidence totally tanked. So the self doubt the oh my gosh, I've been out nine months, how do I compete with my teammates who have been playing like I was on a really high level team. And so when I, when I got back to playing, I was like overthinking every mistake. I didn't want to play. Like, I just felt like I was trapped kind of by my own thoughts. I stopped having fun. I almost quit when I was 15 years old, just because I, I couldn't handle the pressure. I was just not confident. And ultimately I just wasn't having fun anymore, but luckily, like I decided to keep going and I got recruited to play in college and in college, my confidence was a little bit better but it still wasn't great. Like my junior year, I again got injured and confidence went down again. So junior year was horrible, worst season of my life. I was on the bench. I was being a bad teammate, all of the things. <laughs> and then finally, like between my junior and senior year, I was like, all right, Shay, like you have one more year left, right? And what are you going to make of it? And so I started learning from our sports psychologist at the time, I was in a sports psychologist class and he started working with us a little bit. I started learning from him, started applying what, you know, he was teaching some of the strategies and, and how to have the right mindset and all of that stuff. And so then senior year, I turned around and had probably the best season of my life. So I went from sitting on the bench and being a complainer to being a starter, having fun, being a team captain. And so that's what really got me into this is I didn't want other girls to go through what I went through because I felt like I was alone. I felt like I was the only one struggling with it. And I just, it was just like a horrible, you know, experience to my youth career when I wasn't confident. So that's just my big mission is to let girls know number one, that they aren't alone. And number two, that like the mental training, the confidence, the mindset, like is the missing piece to not only your performance, but also like true happiness and fulfillment in your life. I'm sure that, um, that, you know, when you're sitting in that position, like, but what drove you to continue going on? Um, like, especially at that young age and then being recruited in college. So, you know, and then after that, like, did your college <laughs> career kind of, because it sounded like you're going pretty good in college. Yeah. So then you just like, okay, I'm just retiring and this is what I'm doing. Or do you like, how is that? How did that play out for you? 
Yeah. Oh, so when I was 15, the thing that drove me to, to keep going was really like my whole identity was a soccer player. Like I didn't know what I would do if I wasn't playing soccer and I just had that dream of playing in college. So that's what drove me in that moment. And then what drove me in college, it honestly wasn't the sport itself. It wasn't that I was obsessed with soccer, that I love soccer. It was that the experience, it was the teammates, the relationships, it was all of those things. And it was like, you know what? I know that I'm going to totally miss this when I'm done. And I do. So I knew that like, if I wanted to have a good season, like it was in my control, it wasn't, it wasn't outside of me. And so that's what really drove me in college was just like, I want to enjoy this time that I have left. Cause it'll probably be some of the best times in my life. Did you not have that kind of relationship with your team when you were younger or were you just very like on, on a mission, like by yourself? Um, kind of both my, my team relationships in club as a youth player, they were very, very good. Like we never had drama. We always had great relationships, but in college, it was different in college. It's like a family. Whereas as a youth player, it was like, I see them a couple times a week, we hang out, but I didn't feel, I just didn't know how to talk about my lack of confidence. I didn't know how to talk. I also had anxiety. I didn't know how to talk about it. At the time, it was something that I was, to be honest, ashamed of. Like I was embarrassed that I wasn't confident. I was embarrassed that I had anxiety, that I was feeling the way I was feeling. And so I think I just kind of internalized everything. Wow. So now when did you decide that this, okay, so what did you do in, in, you know, okay, you call it college, in college, university, I was call it university because I'm yep, Canadian. Yep. <laughs> what did you do right. in college that drove you or motivated you to then turn this into a business? Well, actually I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be business until <laughs> way after. <laughs> so when I got done with college, uh, university, um, I, I started coaching a little bit, but my main goal was to be um, in athletic administration for a university. Like that's what all my internships were in. So I was in marketing, I was in student athlete academic services. So that was my goal. Um, but when I moved to Sacramento, California, I couldn't find a job. I was like, okay, I couldn't find a job. It was like, I didn't know anybody in the area. And so I just dabbled in a bunch of things, just trying to get a job, honestly. So I worked, I worked five jobs at one time. One of those oh. was coaching physical therapy, personal training, like five jobs at one time. And then I was like, okay, well, I could make a little extra money training kids, like training soccer one-on-one. -on -one. So I started doing that and I turned that into my full-time business. And then after a couple of years of that, I was like, this, this isn't what I love. Like, I feel like I can help them become more confident, but like, it's, it's more focused on the technical side, the physical side. And so I realized that in order for me to like really do what I love, like I need to step away from, you know, the in-person training, like skills training, and I need to get into just like full on like confidence, mental training. So I've been doing full on confidence, mental training for, I think like two, two and a half years. So it kind of evolved from soccer training to mental and confidence uh, training. That is really interesting. So I bet every kid that you coached, you probably heard roughly the same story. Absolutely. So I was just thinking about that because I am a cycling coach and I have a woman's cycling club. And one of the first things that everybody's required to do when they come into the club is to do a four hour clinic with me. So I like mm -hmm. a group as a group. So to learn how to group ride together and safely and change gears and all that stuff. So everybody's like safe and but I always do a round table as to what brought them to the club. Yeah. And it's always the same story. Like, I don't yeah. like riding by myself. My husband's too fast. I need to find more people. I want to become better and all these things. I'm like, huh, maybe I need to talk to you about <laughs> scaling my, <laughs> my offerings some like to a different level, but that, so that's yeah. really interesting. So I'm, you know, like, I, cause I work with, uh, you know, women 40 and above Yeah. and you're still like with high school mm -hmm. and younger in college mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly middle school, high school, but then I work with a couple like, you know, seniors and college kids too. So 
cool. I love this. Now let's talk about how you got into, into the podcast. So I've mm. listened to you on a couple podcasts and I was like, oh, there's some cool things that, that you <laughs> came out like, um, and, uh, and also how the book came about, mm. uh, a little prompting from a coach or a friend, Yeah, get it done. And then, so let's just talk about the podcast and like how that have you, how you've been able to kind of scale that to, mm-hmm. to op- as an extra offering and, um, just coaching for mindset. Yeah. So the podcast actually came out before I started doing like straight up confidence coaching. Like I, I came out with it when I was still doing training and that was, I think my way at the time of like putting more, um, mental training into what I was doing. And so I can't even remember. Um, I think I started it in gosh, 2017 or 18. (laughs) I'll have to look. Oh, Um, really? Wow. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a couple years. Um, I think 2018, but again, my, my business coach, um, he, so he was my business coach, my very first business coach for like the training side of it. And I still work with him today, but he encouraged me. He's like, Shay, like you, you should put out a podcast. Like they're starting to gain steam. Like it's a great way for you to get your message out there. I was like, I don't know anything about podcasting. Like at the time I wasn't confident in my speaking ability. I was like, Oh, I'm going to study or stutter over my words just as I'm doing it now. Right. And I was just like, this is a great way for me to get my message out to like people outside of like Sacramento, California. Cause at the time I was just in Sacramento. So I was like, this is a great way for me to do it. And to start talking about more of the mental side of things. So my goal going in was like, I'm going to do it every single week. Like I'm not going to miss a week. And so I have done that. Like I've put out a podcast every single week and then starting back in July of this year. Oh, I guess we're in July right now. Um, But in July, I started doing two episodes a week. So I was like, and right now I'm like, Ooh, that's a lot, but, (laughs) but it's good. Right. And so I've, I've honestly been my podcast, obviously my book too. um, But my podcast, I think was one of the biggest things that totally transformed my own confidence, my own speaking abilities, but also more importantly, transformed my ability to reach more people and really was a catalyst for like a lot of amazing things happening in my business. So talk about that. Like, I know, cause you're probably like, okay, I'm trying to reach more kids. Um, and then maybe using this as a voice for yourself that maybe you can't get across. Like you guys should listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so like, right. you your parents listen to my podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the thing is like, I, at first I was like, I don't know if kids are going to like teenagers are going to listen to a podcast. So my episodes at the start were like, you know, five minutes. So they've gotten a little bit longer. Like my solo episodes are like 10 minutes, but that's why they're short is because kids have a short attention span. Right. And so the audience I'm speaking to the kids, but a lot of parents also listen. A lot of coaches also listen. So I kind of mix in some different episodes for players specifically. It's mostly that, but also a couple of episodes a month for like coaches and parents, because it's just as important for the parents to be on board as it is for the players. It's just like, you know, the saying it takes a village, right? Like it literally takes a village to transform a player's confidence. And so that's why I really like to bring the parents on board too, because their role is so important. what they hear at home that has the most effect. So let me just segue into that because how, because one of the things that I've wanted to do was start like a junior, like a high school, like target females for cycling, like building up a, a younger cycling club. And I have to say, Shay, that one of my biggest fears is dealing with parents Mm. because I am such a tough love parent myself. I would probably not make too many friends. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to say that it's you know, yeah. bad, but how do you, how do you, how do you deal with that parent that, you know, mm-hmm. it's like my kid's the best or like, or maybe mm-hmm. the the parent that's, that, you know, that the kid isn't 
like needs a little extra at home and mm -hmm. but you can you can see it in them and you need to kind of relay it to a parent you know that yeah. that kind of very touchy stuff because you yeah. want to give yourself to the kid as much as you can but you know that you can only do so much on a field mm -hmm. but then it's everything at home that yeah. is is having the effect yeah, honestly, like working with the kids for me is easy. Uh, like mm -hmm. I have a lot of amazing parents and families in my programs, uh, but generally the parents is where I get the most frustrated um, just because it does start at home. There's times where I have calls with kids and we're, we're doing so much groundwork, but then at home, it's like, uh, it's like, it, it's not, it's not aligned with, with what we're talking about, which makes it really difficult. Um, and that doesn't happen very often. Like most of the, the people I work with, they're very aligned and stuff like that. But with that being said, the, the parents have been not as involved, which why with my, my new program that I started, um, I think I started a couple months ago, um, we have a monthly parent calls. So usually I just worked with the kids, but now I have parent calls. So actually tomorrow or actually tonight, we have a parent call where, you know, I want the parents to be able to ask questions. I want to teach on topics that the parents can do because it really is so important. So I'm excited about, you know, doing more of the parent stuff like in my paid programs. I like that. Is that, is that getting a lot of good positive response or just do parents kind of feel targeted? You know what? We'll see. Cause this is the first, <laughs> this, tonight, this is, your first one. Oh, tonight is awesome. the first call with the parents, but um, I do have a Facebook group and every week I do a live where I'm speaking primarily to the parents. So those get really good responses. Parents are very engaged in that. Um, but I have yet to have like a parent call like in my paid program. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm really excited about it. Um, and also interested to see like, you know, <laughs> the, the engagement and the questions and the discussion that goes on. Yeah, is that going to be over Zoom? Is that uh, so you can see everybody? Yeah, it'll be over Zoom. It'll be very like, just like my player calls, very engaged and interactive and that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just in case it takes a, a beeline up somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> we need to bring everything back. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. So now let's go back to, um, well, let's talk about the program that you just launched um, and, and how you decided to start that and how yeah. it's going. Yeah. So this new program is called the Alpha Girl Collective. So it's, it kind of, I open it up every, every few months. Um, but it's, it's really cool. Cause we, like I said, we have, a, we have a weekly call for the players where we do coaching topics, um, we have Q and A calls for the players. I bring on, you know, guest speakers and nutrition and strength and conditioning, um, other confidence coaches. So it's really cool for them to kind of get perspective from other people. And then we have our parent calls too. So like my goal with this program is like to really just create like this awesome community of players and parents that are like super committed to working on their confidence and their mental game. Cause in the past it was like, like, I just love group coaching programs so much because for the girls, like all the feedback that I've gotten from group programs is like, one of the coolest things is being able to talk to other girls, being able to hear what other girls are going through and being able to help other girls, you know, like there's some younger kids and some older kids will give them advice. And as a coach, it's really cool to see, but for them, I think it's really valuable just to see that like there's a community of people that, that support them and that are going through the same thing. So is this like a global or is this kind of like um, a local kind of, or do you have people from all over United States or? Yeah, all world? over, all over United States. Um, like a lot of them are on the East coast, but I think we have, have some from every time zone. Um, and then as far as global, it's hard for, the global kids just because the time zones are so different, but I do work one-on-one -on -one with a, with a German girl, um, who she was actually on my podcast recently. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, global is, is wherever you can have an internet connection. It's like, yeah, I know. Are you willing to stay on. up late? <laughs> right. Right. Tune in. So you said, so are you having, um, guests on your podcast now? Is that your second launch? Like your second, uh, 
episode in the week? Yeah. So actually I've had, I started doing guests, um, I think last year, but it was only once a month. So now I'm, I'm still doing guests, but usually I do them twice a month. Um, so just to, you know, have more conversations and such. Um, but I, I love, I love doing guest calls and, you know, talking to other people. Like I, I have one that's going to launch soon where I talk to one of my former teammates who's a, a nutrition expert. So that was really fun. I love interviews. Like I only do out of three in the week. I only do one myself and oh my gosh, that's like the hardest one ever. <laughs> That's so true. Interviews are actually like, yeah, they take more time, but they're, they're much more fun. Yeah. Like, so what I end up doing is like Thursday mornings, I do hill repeats. And I always like, every time I do like some sort of interval or workout, I might like, everything's like, Oh, what do I talk about? Then I sit in my car and I start, I do my, podcast. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, we're going to talk about this today. Cause I just thought about it. And, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to give you a tip on some hill climbing and whatever. Yeah. But, um, so I'm like, Oh, well, this is kind of a, uh, and then I'll go home and then I'll upload it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is <laughs> kind of working, but, um, but yeah, so so you got your podcast, everybody make sure you go and check out alpha girl confidence. Super good. Um, and then now the book, like how did, so did you use some of your podcast kind of episodes for that? Or did you put it all together? Like, cause I was just honestly just looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go buy it afterwards and I'm going to read it and then I'm going to hand it to my daughter. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and I'm like, because, you know, like, I don't know, as a parent having kids, like I said, we, we all want them to do their best and especially Excel. Like she did gymnastics and she had some serious blockages, mm -hmm. um, fear related. And, you know, her coach has said like, she could be really good, but she's got some fear yeah. that she won't let go. And I mean, like, I don't know, as a parent, how do you figure that out? Um, and what exactly is it and, and things like that. So, but, so how did your book come about? Yeah. So my book actually came about kind of from like the curriculum that I was using when I very first started coaching. So at first I was just doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so that's kind of where the, I guess the chapters and, and the um, sections of my book came about is just through like the curriculum that I created. Right. So then, um, now looking back, like on my book, I'm like, I I'm pretty sure I'm going to write another book. And when I do, I'm like, wow, there's going to be so much more stuff. Cause I wrote my book like pretty early on when I started confidence coaching and now only, you know, two years later, I feel like I've just learned so much from coaching more and from working on it myself more that when I write a second book, it's going to be a lot beefier, but like, I, I love this book. Like when I first, you know, thought about writing it and when I first published it, I was like, okay, like I, I think it'll do pretty good for a couple months and then it'll probably die off and, you know, help a couple hundred kids and that'll be great. But to my <laughs> surprise, like it sold very consistently for the, since it launched back in December, 2019. So it's been very, very consistent. And I just, I, I'm blown away by like how good it's done. That's amazing. Now, what was I going to say? I, oh yeah. I listened to one of your podcasts when you're talking about how you're writing it, like <laughs> the struggles talk about writing the book. Like it would, I, cause I had, I just chuckled. I was actually uh, on a really long ride and I, and I cycled through a couple of your interviews and I was just like, this is really funny. <laughs> so, so talk about like the struggles of putting your book together and getting it, getting it launched. Cause I know your coach helped you. You're like your business coach. Yeah. I mean, he was like, cause I remember we were, we were, I went to go visit him in Texas and we were doing some workshopping stuff and he's like, okay, by the end of the year, like your book is going to be like out. <laughs> and so that was in April and then it was October and I was like, oh shoot. Like I haven't, I haven't written my book yet. I haven't even really thought about it. And so in October, yeah, I was like, okay, girl, it's time to get your butt going and time to start like really committing to writing your book. So, uh, the, one of the hardest parts was really figuring out like what goes in the book, how does the outline look like that kind of stuff. 
But once I got that, I like, I can't remember exactly, but I was working at a co-working office. And so I was, I was in a really good environment where I could just put my headphones on and really like get to work. But I, I just wrote like, I would say an hour or two a day. It wasn't like this thing where I went to a hotel room and like, you know, like, you know, how yeah, writers right. they'll, they'll go wrote to it. another country and write their book. Like, no, <laughs> I was just in the office and yeah. wrote a couple hours a day. Most of it was just from my own experience and from coaching like other kids and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of just like this slow, well, I wouldn't say slow. I would say steady process to where I started in October, finished it end of December. So it took me two months which isn't too long. I would say generally that's pretty fast. Um, but then again, like at the time I wasn't, I wasn't confident in my abilities as a writer. Like, I'm like, I'm not a writer. I'm not an author. Like who am I to be writing this book? And so at the time I was only going to do an ebook. It was just going to be like on Kindle or you could download a PDF or something. And then I had a friend who was like, Shay, like, why don't you just put it in a paperback? I was like, really? Can I do that? Like, is it good enough? Is it good enough to be a paperback? And she's like, yeah, just do it. And yeah. so I actually decided to do a paperback after I had already published the Kindle version. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get this out before Christmas. Cause I wanted people to be able to order it. For oh, yeah. Right. And so, um, I have it on here when it was, uh, no, that's a new, new version. Um, but it was like <laughs> December 19th when it was like live, I got the, the paperback, it was kind of a headache. Like I was so stressed out trying to get it done then making the edits. And there's still plenty of errors in there. Like I actually had a parent or no, a coach. I had a coach who ordered a ton for his soccer team and he <laughs> emailed me back. Love him. It's awesome. He emailed me back and was like, Hey, there's, there, here's some errors and like a, a whole paragraph of errors. Oh my I, was God. Like, yeah. I love those people. But, uh, but you know what is he, he had the older version. I actually do have the newer version that has, I took out some of those errors and I'm like, yeah, I actually fixed some of those, but there's definitely still some errors. So it's just, <laughs> it's been a learning process. It's been really cool to see. And I think the best thing that I've learned and that I would portray to other people is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Start before you're ready. Like just get it out there. It's never going to be perfect. And so stop like overthinking it and trying to make it like this perfect thing. Cause it, it'll never be that way. Yeah. I love it because, you know, I can just see you like, Oh my God, I just got to get it out. And uh, yeah, I'll just deal with the edits. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, but, I, I had an editor too. And I, I guess he just missed a few things. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Just a second. Did you actually read this book? I know. Right? Well, I mean, and you know what people are, uh, you know, forgiving. Most people are forgiving and they're just like, yeah, you, know, you can't, it's like, <laughs> yeah, just to get I was like, this is a book for teenagers. This isn't some yeah. like academia book. Like, it's okay if there's a few errors in there. Like I, I wasn't too worried about it. Yeah. Also, like, maybe they won't even catch. On that anyways. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So you've got the book. I'm going to go get the book. I love the cover, by the way. That was my teammate who designed it. Cool. Yeah, my teammate like Ashley. In the background. How about you grab your book? I have it right here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. She the confident. I yeah, love so... that whole book. It kind of, you know, it makes me think about like all the numbers and everything. You know how coaches throw all that stuff out. Like you have to be this and that and the numbers and yes. the power to weight ratio and, and the speed right. and cadence. And yeah, it's just like, it's like. It's what? so cool. I just like, want to ride my bike or like, I just want to play soccer. I don't get. <laughs> yeah. And like the book is what I love about it is obviously all the writing is completely hundred percent mine, but my friend, uh, Ashlyn, my college teammate, one of my best friends designed the cover. She's a graphic oh. designer. And then my brother actually came up with a name. So well, I was like, it's, it's everything you do. I mean, it's in yeah. everything. Yeah. Right? It's really cool. Like the cover, I remember coming up with some names and texting them over to my family in the group text. And then my brother just said, like, she the confident. And I was like, what? Like, that's kind of, what do you mean? Like, I don't know about that. And then I was like, wait, that actually is really cool. So, um, you know, love you. Love you, brother. Thanks. Brother. Yeah, because you've got the alpha girl confidence. And like, so it all really segues together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so now you, so everybody, 
you're listening, just go to Amazon, Google Shay. You can Google Shay Hadu, or you can just Google Is She the Confident? And because it came up when I Googled your name. Yeah. What? Yeah. It, oh, it'll come gosh, up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I should have been on that. Now, you designed something that I think is really, really cool. And I know text messaging is like all the rage for like confidence. And I actually had something uh, about a year ago. It was a daily affirmations or a text message. And then I stopped the text messaging service. And so, but I'm like, man, I need to get that back. Because people, I had a lot of people on there. Um, now, what made you decide to do that? Because yeah. I don't think you do it daily. I do it three and times it, a week. Yeah. So talk about that. So and you said you're um, changing it up too. So yeah. So I'll talk about that too. But how yeah. I came up with the idea is Chris Harder's podcast. Um, <laughs> I remember he was talking about micro subscriptions and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. You heard that one. Yes. I heard that one too. And I was that like, that was the one. That is such a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So that was what really got me into it. And I was like, wow, this could be really, really cool. So um, then before like creating it, I went to my Facebook group and I said, hey, who would be interested in this? And people were like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So I like created it within like a week. I like just pumped it out, got everything ready. Um, so we do three messages a week. And in the messages, it's like me doing a one to two minute video of like, you know, different confidence tips and strategies and stuff like that. Um, and then the girls can also text me back and some of them ask me questions. Most of them don't. Um, but it's, it's just really cool to be able to connect with them. And then recently, this is not my idea, but the idea of my, my content creator, Marissa, she's been working on something where there's like a sticker subscription. So every month, uh, the girls get like a, a sticker, oh, actually a bunch of stickers with affirmations, with quotes, and then we'll put a QR code on like a, a postcard where I do like a long confidence video. And so it's really cool because um, obviously she's the one that has designed everything. I have them over on my couch there. Gosh, you she, have to show us. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab them real quick. So a sticker subscription. So that's to put yeah. on their books, their laptops. Yeah, and another like cool thing is like softball players putting them on their bats. So as they're up to bat, um, yeah, water bottles, uh, notebooks, all that kind of stuff. So they'll get like a postcard kind of like this with a saying. Um, and then there'll probably be like a, another saying or like a QR code on the back where I'll do like a, you know, 10 to 20 minute confidence training. And then there's like- Stickers or cards? Okay, both. those are the stickers. Both. And then they'll get um, stickers, like three stickers um, to go with the kind of like the postcard thing. And, you know, there'll be confidence trainings on there. So they'll get those once a month. And I was going to do that in addition to the text, but I decided to kind of, you know, kind of push away the text and do this instead. Cause I was getting feedback that the texts were sometimes overwhelming. Like, oh, my daughter isn't keeping up with them. Like she's not watching them and stuff like that. And so I thought this would be a, a better way to get them to have something tangible and then also to do like more of a, in like a deeper, like monthly training as opposed to like these shorter ones. So I'm, I'm really excited about, it. I think it'll be really cool. Yeah. Or even like the text, like not a video, but just a saying, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of what I did was just like, a, yeah. a, a quote or, you know, something daily that was going out. Yeah. So I, I did a few like just sayings, most of them are videos, but I did a few like just quotes or whatever, but like kids love stickers. And so like, why not just put those sayings onto a sticker? So I think, I think it'll be a really cool thing and props to my, my team for coming up with that idea. So how long have you been working with a team? Like when did your business hit the, the point where you, you got a team rolling? Yeah. So, so Marissa, my content creator, she's been on the team for a couple of years. She's, um, she does edits all the podcasts. She, um, like is the creative one, does a lot of the graphics. And then my assistant, who's also my sister, she does a <laughs> lot of the, uh, I was like, Hey, you want to work for me? She's like, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. so yeah, she does a lot too. She does schedules, a lot of emails. She, um, does a lot of messaging back and forth with the Facebook group members. So she's, She's a critical role and I can't imagine doing what I do without those two. Right. No kidding. I mean, it's, 
I'm just starting to um, hire like, you know, for things that I'm like, I really want to offload. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, this feels really good actually. Yeah. Cause then <laughs> all I have to do is do this, send it off totally. and they'll make sure everything is. And I'm like, well, if you're really good, I'll add, <laughs> start right. adding to it. <laughs> so, all right. So you're, you're launching the sticker subscription. And so how much is that? And of course you're going to be launching it soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and where can they find that? So it'll be seven ninety nine a month to start, um, depending on costs and stuff that may fluctuate, but it'll be seven ninety nine a month. And then where they can go, I will, I will have kind of a, a sign up page. I don't have it created at the time we're recording this. Um, but that'll be, I assume we'll, we'll have it up and ready to go in the show notes. It'll be on the website for sure. So that's where they can sign up. And the first month, um, first month or two will be pretty limited because we kind of are doing a test. So I think we only have a certain amount of, of stickers and stuff for the first month. So if you want to get in, got to do it, got to do it quick. Cause I'm pretty sure it'll fill up pretty fast. Well, so you're taking a certain amount of people. Just to, just to start as we get going after the second and third month, we'll be able to take more, but we, we already have everything to go out. So we're just limiting the first one just to kind of be like our, our test month, if you will. How, how, how it works. So are yeah. you doing all the sending too? No, I'm honestly, I'm not really doing much at all. Um, I am, <laughs> I'm creating the pages, the payments, um, you know, that kind of stuff. But my con Marissa, she's creating the sticker. She's sending everything out. Um, I'll do some promo stuff for sure, but she's doing most of the actual sending and creating and all that kind of stuff. Kind of going from in-house. Yeah. You'll be saying, oh my God. So that's yeah. you're just like, like, I just want to ease into that. Yeah. I'm like, you, you take it and run and I'll be here to support you. But like, this is, this is all you girl. Hey, I need you to help take stuff to the post office. <laughs> yeah, I might have to. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, to see how this grows. Well, that's yeah. super awesome. Now, I know we are time crunched, but I really want to ask you, like, in all of this, what were some of the things that were the toughest to get over for you as you transition to like more coaching the kids and with the parents? I would say which I think a lot of people struggle with in their life is just like imposter syndrome in a sense of like, who, who am I to, to be doing this? Like, you know, people, I think sometimes people hold me on a pedestal because I have a book and podcasts and stuff like that. And then when I hear intros, I'm like, Oh, wow. Like, I don't really think of myself that way. Like, so I think the thing is just like imposter syndrome. Like I don't have I'm not a certified, I don't have a master. I do have a master's, but not in that. Um, just like, you know, the, the, who are you to be teaching this kind of thing? Um, which I have gotten over that just cause like, I'm like experience is everything, not only my experience, but coaching hundreds of other girls. Um, so I think really just that self-doubt and fear, and this is still stuff that I think I'm going to have to get over every time I reach a new level is the fear of, what if people don't like it? What if it doesn't resonate? What if this, I launch this and put my heart and soul into it and people just don't gravitate to it. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, I think biggest struggle for me as it come when it comes to like business and promoting your products and stuff like that. Have you ever had anything like seriously flop where you're like, Oh, that was not so good. And I need to go back to the drawing board. Um, honestly, I don't think I have. Not really. (laughs) I like, I I really don't think I have. I mean, there's been launches where I'm like, where I only, you know, got a, not as many kids as I wanted. Um, I would say the biggest flop I had was actually when I was doing, um, like in person, like soccer camps and the one before I had like 26 people there. I was like, this is awesome. Cause it was free. So people showed up. And then yeah. the first time I did a paid one, only two people showed up. And I would say that's kind of been my biggest flop is just like, I just felt like, oh my gosh, like I wanted to cancel it. I didn't want to do it. And then, oh, that also happened with a confidence workshop that I did where I had one previously, I had like, I had like oversold it. Like we had not enough room in the, in the conference room. 
and it did amazing. And then I launched another one in March, 2020 and only two people signed up and then COVID saved the day. And I didn't do it because COVID happened. So it never happened, but that was another big flop is <laughs> no one signed up for my confidence workshop. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm kind of the same, you know, like you're putting things out there and you're like, Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And then you're like, Oh, not so many people think it's awesome. And, mm -hmm. but I often think like, Oh, I have to go back to the drawing board and launch it differently, different name. You know what I mean? Like they always say, like, you have to really test it out and see what, what message people gravitate to. Yeah. And sometimes so. it's not what you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, this is super awesome. Now, um, did we call everything? So we have the podcast, the book, the texts, which are going to start shortly. Mm -hmm. Um, now what, what other projects are you like doing this fall? You know, not, not anything really. Like I want to really keep my focus on Alpha Girl Collective, which is the group coaching. Like I want that to be my focus. I want the stickers to be part of my focus, but more so Marissa's focus, but still like really growing that. And then also um, really just getting, getting in front of more people, like, you know, doing team workshops, um, getting involved in other organizations and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have any in mind? Are you, sir, you're still in Sacramento? Yeah, correct. What, what took you there to begin with? Because you said so you I, moved there and nobody knew you. Yeah, I moved here because my my now wife lives here. So I moved here to to be with her. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. you like, I thought it was like a parent or school or yep. job or something. Yeah. Cool. So you're building quite the empire in Sacramento. People are getting to know you. And it's it's crazy too that um, along with what you just said, empire in Sacramento, <laughs> most of the people that I work with are not from here. Oh, really? <laughs> Most of the people, um, like in my confidence stuff, a lot of them are on the East coast. So I do, oh, wow. I have done stuff with local teams here and I want to get now that COVID is, well, it's not over, but now that we can do more stuff, I definitely want to get more into the community and doing stuff like that. So that's one of my goals too, for like this year, next year is, is kind of building up the community a bit, a bit more. Right. Oh, that's funny. I wonder what's, what about the East coast? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Air? No, maybe it's not as hot. <laughs> maybe it's because it's seasonal. Maybe. Hmm? Maybe it's the humidity. <laughs> maybe like that side of the, the United States over this side. Maybe they're more active. Maybe there's more soccer. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. that. Well, I, I really don't have an answer. I don't know. Do you, do you take girls in there that obviously not just soccer yeah soccer, yeah like most, all sorts of high school. Mm -hmm. most of them are soccer but we got softball volleyball track and field basketball oh, figure okay. skating like we got it got it high all. school sports mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so do you have okay um a really good um success story out of here like one kid that came in and really like took everything you taught and ran with it. Do you have I one? Have, I have a lot. Um, so I want to think of one. Um, her name Still is Caitlin. Big impact. Yeah. Her name is Caitlin. She is a right now. I think she's a a junior. Um, but she started. She started in one of my very first group programs last year, last summer. Um, and then so she she worked in my group programs for. For about nine months. So she did one program for three months, one program for six months. And she, um, she was one of the older kids in my group. So at first she was kind of hesitant. I remember her saying that her mom was like, Caitlin, you're going to do this. And she was like, Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I need this mom. Like, why do I need this? Right. And so she was one of those kids that was like, I don't, I don't need this. I just need to train harder. I just need to do more strength and conditioning. I just need to do this stuff. And it's just been really cool to see because I've done some one-on-ones with her as well. Like she went from total like hesitation and like fear of judgment and comparison and all that stuff to now she's like such an amazing leader. Like she'll stand up for herself. She's like such a strong leader. She's in the college recruiting process. So she's doing awesome. And she's just like, she's just so like 
grown so much more confidence just in like the way she speaks and just in her like life in general. Like she was actually on one of my podcasts, um, like a couple months ago, I interviewed her. And so if you really want to hear her transformation, just call oh, which to episode, that. do you know? Um, I don't know the number for sure. Probably in the one twenties, perhaps somewhere around the one twenties, I can send it to you. Um, but it was, it was, it's been really cool to see her transform, but there's, there's, there's been a lot, you know, it's, it's really cool to just, when I get a text or, you know, a message from a parent and, and get this, you know, like how much for me, it's not about just the sport. It's more about their life and their life out of the sports. But when I get those texts, I just like, I'm like, you know what, this is what it's all for. Like when times get tough, I just have to read those. And I remind myself that like, I'm making a really big impact. Yeah. Cause I've interviewed some girls who are, you know, have gone to elite cycling, but they started say like, uh, soccer was one of them track and field running mm -hmm. and they either got injured or whatever that brought them to cycling. Yeah. And some of their stories of like, you know, eating disorders and things like that, that, um, that they went through in their younger ages and like identity crisis and all yes, this stuff. Totally. It, it, I was just like, wow. And now they're in their twenties. Like, you know, one of them is like mountain bike racing in the Olympics right now, you oh, know? Wow. And, and yeah. Some of them are on the track so right cool. now. Yeah. So, it, so you just, you know, you listen to their story and you're just like, wow, but you know, somebody was there to, to help them, you know, move forward. Yeah. And, and, and it's great. Cause you can see that they progressed to where, yeah. you know, where their dreams were, right. where their dream, where their dreams, anyways, you know what I mean? Well, when, what I'm the most excited had, about, yeah. yeah. What I'm most excited about is like five years down the road to be able to connect with them and see like what they've done with their life. Like, I feel like that's going to be like really cool to just, you know, see, see how far they've gone and see like kind of the things that they've accomplished. And more importantly, just the people that they've become, you know, since working on their mindset and stuff. Yeah. Now, do you have, okay, here's the last one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know we're coming to the top of the hour. Oh, you're good. Um, so here's another one. This is about parents. Mm. Can you think, <laughs> can you think of one incident or a parental unit that really made it a shift from the negative to the positive. Because, you know, with kids come parents and parents impact kids outside yeah. of your, your coaching. Yeah. So I, I can think of one. Um, it was actually one of like one of the first parents that I started working with or players that I started working with. And he was just the typical, um, you know, my kid's the best, like pushing your kids to go train all the time, you know, just like, like do great in the sense of like, he wanted to do everything for his kids, but it was just almost like too overbearing. Like it was like all what dad wanted. Right. And so that was definitely a struggle to begin with. But then I had a conversation with him last year and he was like, Shay, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I feel like my kids are starting to like, you know, like rebel against me and, and like, they aren't wanting to do stuff. And I feel like they're feeling a lot of pressure from me. And so we just talked about like, you know, like how, how he needs to just like, let go of the reins a little bit and just give them some space and let them do the talking and just listen and, you know, not, not try to criticize them all the time and give them feedback all the time. And so that was really cool to see just because it was, I saw him like open up and kind of like soften up in a lot of ways, which I think really made a big impact in like his daughters and they're able to train together without like butting heads and stuff like that. So it's been really cool to see. Oh my God, that's great. And my dad too. My dad was a, <laughs> my dad was a big, a big um, <laughs> factor. And so that's why, I think that's one reason why I do like, addressing the parents so much. Cause I know how, how big of an impact they had on my life. So, so yeah. Right. I know. Cause like just being a parent, watching other parents and you're just like, Whoa, right. <laughs> I'm like, yikes. <laughs> I know. And I'm just like, I don't know what I'm like, but cause I, sometimes I think yeah. of, I, I, I hear myself think talk, but like mm -hmm. I said, I try and keep it. I try. Like, I think I try. 
Yeah. And like, I like soft and, you know, mm-hmm. like you guys make your own choice and I'm here and, you know, I, I, well, I'm sure I'm tougher than that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like, I, I don't try to pretend that I'm like this parenting expert. I'm not a parent myself, but I do try to research and, and, you know, just use my own experience and my player's experience to, you know, come from the player's perspective and just kind of help them that way. So I, I think, I think they get a lot of value out of it. At least I hope they do. Well, it sounds like they do because you're doing a great thing. Yeah. Again, that's why I'm so glad that you're on this podcast because you know, it doesn't matter what sport, it doesn't matter what gender. I'm sure you probably have, do you have any guys or is it just girls? I don't, I don't have any guys, nothing against guys, but it's just, they just go through such different things, you know? So I just focus it all on girls. Well, yeah, I'm kind of like a lot of people, why don't you have guys? Well, they just change the dynamic. Yeah. And and, in a group, (laughs) the, the girls wouldn't open up. It would just, they just wouldn't be the same. But I'm super glad that we were able to make this happen because I know that you are so busy. And um, I just want to thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. And I want to thank our listeners for jumping in and taking in this episode. Please, if you can think of somebody, and I'm sure everyone can think of a family who has a female in high school or college that's in a sport that could probably really... Um, find value in this episode and certainly through all the stuff that that Shay is doing please share this um with your friend and don't forget to subscribe and follow and give us a five star right Shay five yes stars. thank you so much thank for having you. me on Sylvia it was fun thanks a lot I loved it and we'll see you on the next episode